Hi everyone, thanks for the opportunity to speak today. So, um, uh, it's Mika mentioned that there's been a lot of um, talks about, you know, journeys uh, through what you know what you're doing as um, as uh, web managers within your institutions, and um, so I thought I would not do a, a journey type story at all. Um, um, also, just to say that the, the links for my slides are online, so you can get those as well. And so, let me just try and get this going. So, no, no more stories, no more journeys. And so, I'd, um, I'd like to start with the story of my journey, evolution uh, at uh, I, IWMW. Um, so uh, many years ago, I was a HTML editor working for um, a company up in Scotland. Um, so I was doing all the copy and paste stuff. Uh, and then I went into learning technology um, for a number of years. And uh, it was whilst I was working within JISC at uh, various innovation centers that I came in touch with IWMW. I think it was IWMW 2009 in Aberdeen. Um, so I was aware of the event, but it wasn't until I think the following year that I actually came. And um, because Brian was working at, at another JISC service, he managed to um, twist my arms a, a number of times to do bits and pieces. But one of the things that um, uh, that came out of my contact with INW is a lot of stuff that is still going on now, uh, and a big part of my my day-to-day -day stuff or my hobbies. So. Um, if you're familiar with the Twitter archiving stuff, that came out of IWMW12, I think, or something like that. And uh, there's a blog post on IWMW.org about this. And um, so it's an event where I keep coming to and doing new stuff that I hadn't plan planned on doing. And um, this talk is <laughs> in that category. So um, I have a lot um, to, to give back to IWMW in, in terms of who I am. And now I find myself within having been an innovation learning technologist um, actually as a web manager. So this seems like the fitting event for me to be at. Um, but uh, it, uh, it is a bit worrying where I might end up uh, in a couple of years um, uh, looking a bit like my dad, which is uh, a bit scary. But anyway, so one of the things that um, IWMW uh, did for me was I, I started exploring coding more and as a result of that uh, started looking at uh, a particular Google product which no one has ever heard of called Google Apps Script and a couple of years ago Google asked if I would join their um, community of Google developer experts so I'm not uh, a Google employee anything I say isn't affiliated to Google it's all my own opinions which means I can slag off Google if I want um, but as part of that program um, it, it pulls in various uh, product products, um, so uh, you, you get to share and start talking to to other um, experts with Google products. And there's a, a dedicated group of um, analytics experts. So uh, these people are in the community. Uh, if you've got a problem, if you can find them, uh, they can help you. Uh, and um, this particular talk is really inspired by one guy called um, Nico Michelli who uh, works out of uh, Philadelphia uh, in the States and so he, he deals a lot with setting up Google App Analytics for um, various clients and so this talk um, really is, if you can trace it back, it, you know, the origins are essentially in my being part of the IWMW community. So. Um, just to give you a quick overview of what I hope to talk about, it's really a shotgun approach. I'm going to blast you with a lot of things about Google Analytics and I hope that something sticks with you, something triggers in your mind that you think that this is something that we should be doing within our own organizations. Um, give you some of the ter terminology or language that you can go back and, um, and do something. But I, w I want to just start at the beginning because, you know, in the beginning, it was so much easier. Uh, uh, you know, we had lots of static content. Um, 
you know, we're essentially measuring page views and clicks on links. Um, you know, so it's uh, it's interesting also to to think that uh, you know around this time as well, IWMW was um, just kicking off as well. But now the web is so much cooler. We have lots of different ways of making uh, web pages basically turn into applications. Um, that, you know, we can use AJAX calls, so we can do things in the background and push things. You know, you've probably all got some sort of autocomplete plugin on your your site. You you know, you're no doubt using some of these technologies yourself. But when you start doing that, that obviously makes things um, uh, a lot more complicated in terms of the page view doesn't really count anymore because you know you've got infinite scrolling. You can be there are so many things that you can be doing on a page. Um, so if you want to get some insight into in, in what people are doing on your sites, you can now no longer rely on page views. Um, you have to start looking at the events. So what are people clicking on? Where are they scrolling? Um, how far are they going down the page? Where are they um, navigating to from? Um, so there's, there's, you know, page views don't really do it anymore. But obviously, as the web has got more complex in terms of how it's set up and delivered, um, at the same time, anal analytics and tracking have um, tried to keep up to the pace with it as well. So I'm sure you're all familiar with um, Google Analytics. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did a survey of um, UK higher education sites, and I think it was something like 97% um, had Google Analytics on the homepage. So I'm guessing if I ask you, hands up if you've, you know, you've got Google Analytics, hands up if you use Google Analytics reporting in your job, hands up if you're a Google Analytics admin. Okay, so oh, I suppose there, 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 that is basically everyone. Uh, uh, but it's funny. I, I, there's something at the end I'll, I'll bring in uh, around this. Um, so yes. Oh, I suppose the other thing to mention is we've we've got Google Analytics, but do we use Google Analytics? It's a whole whole different thing. Um, so you know, Google Analytics really helps us to understand engagement with. Uh, our you know web services, uh, and uh, I like to think Google Analytics is the uh, the James Bond of uh, event tracking. It's so clean and elegant and easy to use, uh, and but it's you know it's 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 rugged. It it can get out of those uh, uh, those uh, ha those issues that you 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 encounter if you know how to do it. Um, so I'm, I'm sure you're all familiar with this. You know, so this is the the Google Analytics um, event tracking. So you know you can you install your Google Analytics uh, tracking code on your website, and then you can start hitting uh, data into your uh, into your account. So beyond page views, you're sending events into your uh, into your uh, Google Analytics account. And you know there's various ways that you can do this. Um, uh, so how many of you are actually hand coding event tracking into your links or a couple of you? How many are using jQuery to kind of remove some of the heavy lifting kind of matching elements and yeah, so you know this is a very basic example of just you know tracking a button click um, so uh, this is one of the things um, which is quite interesting, so Google Analytics does not. Uh, allow you to send personal uh, identifiable information into uh, its tracking uh, database. Did, out of interest, did you know that? I see nodding heads. Um, so yes, if you do that, you potentially get your whole account shut down, which is not going to be good. Uh, I'm sure you'll get quick phone calls from people above you. But. Did you know this, that um, you can actually send user IDs into your Google Analytics data? Anyone know that? Is that a win for me? I've taught you something new. So what you can actually do is, you, you, know, you can't send an email address or uh, a user, uh, a screen name into Google Analytics, but you can send a user ID into Google Analytics. And you can actually set this on your page. So this really comes in handy if you, you know, it's no longer just about uh, the, 
you know, web pages anymore. You can start, you know, if you're doing emailings out to alumni or uh, prospective students, you can give them a custom link that actually ties them to a user ID. Um, so you can send this data into Google Analytics pseudo-anonymously. Um, there, there, are more, there is more stuff that you can do in terms of the web interface, in terms of analyzing this. But one of the critical things is you can query this back out of the, um, the, the API. So whilst you, Google is avoiding the data protection headache, um, you can have that data protection headache and you can start making very um, uh, detailed um, analysis of individual users and how they're interacting with your site. Which is something you might want to consider when you're, you know, instead of your throwaway Google Analytics tracking cookies, blah, blah, blah. If you start using this, you might want to add something else in about, oh, and we know who you are. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to touch on this particular error very briefly because it's something I'm interested in. So um, for your uh, learning and teaching teams, learning analytics is a, a, a big thing right now. There's a lot of uh, interest in how we can actually use analytics in terms of improving the, the learning experience. And you can actually use Google Analytics for that purpose. So uh, within your institutions, you've probably got VLEs that have things like multiple choice quizzes. Um, you can use your Google Analytics event tracking to actually record these. And if you include a user ID, you can actually see who is um, responding to these questions. So you can have a multiple choice question, uh, and if you know what, which answers are right and wrong, you can send that data into Google Analytics and query it. Um, so, and you can do this in real time, because of the real time tracking uh, that you get with Google Analytics. So, so if your colleagues start coming to you and saying, how can we use our Google Analytics for learning analytics? You probably might want to say, here's the form, fill it in, or you might want to have a conversation with them to see if there's something you can do. Um, so there's a practical element to that. You don't want to go into your VLE and start coding up you know, hundreds, thousands of multiple choice questions. So Google Tag Manager is uh, the, the potential solution for this. How many of you are using Google Tag Manager? Okay, so it's around half. So for those that you don't, of you who don't know, um, Google Tag Manager, it's similar in uh, the Google Analytics uh, that you, inco you inclu include a tracking snippet within your, uh, within your template. Where it's different is that then basically enables you to have a cloud console where you can start hit basically um, creating your own triggers to send event information into your Google Analytics platform. And because it's a web interface, that web interface can be shared with other people so they can contribute on it. And so you can push out uh, new experiments, you can push out new tracking uh, across your domain very easily and very quickly. Um, so if you're not using Google Tags Manager, what <coughs> the, I think you, sh you should seriously be looking at because I don't think adding event uh, uh, tags to, to all your web pages is a particularly scalable one thing to do. And, uh, there's a, I've got the joy of going straight to give a master class on Google Analytics, which will include um, how you can use Google Tags Manager for this sort of thing. And this is just a screenshot from Google Tags Manager. So similar to the click button example, um, you've got a web interface, so there's a, a degree of friendly, friendliness. Um, and you, know, you, you can go a lot more complex in terms of adding your custom JavaScript uh, uh, into event triggers, so you know you can do things like um, put some JavaScript in that will just sniff if the browser is mobile, and so uh, that can then inject a, a particular tag within the page relevant to a mobile user, um, or you know uh, put additional information into your Google Analytics account about the mobile device that they're using that you're not already getting. Um, so there's a lot of scope there. And it's not just using Google uh, Analytics with Google Tag Manager. Yeah, you, can do, you can actually start tweaking the, the underlying web interface. So 
if you've got a nasty bug within your, uh, your system and you need a quick fix, uh, Google Tag Manager is the way to do this because um, you can start manipulating the page without having to go into your, all your themes. So, um, so that was kind of, ho hopefully you're familiar with that aspect of um, Google Analytics. Uh, Google Analytics also has something called the measurement protocol. Measurement protocol, heard of? No one's heard of? Someone must have heard. Come on, I want one hand. I want one person to lie now. <laughs> Thank you. Can she have a USB stick? <laughs> Um, my god, it's like giving a Google App Script talk all over again. <laughs> so the measurement protocol is quite interesting. Um, it, it, it gives you a grassroots way to interact with um, uh, the Google Analytics data collection. So previously with the, the other Google Anal Analytics tracking, it was very much about websites and web views. The measurement protocol basically gives you an endpoint where you can hit with event tracking information too. Um, so what that means is um, similar to uh, the, the documentation around the kind of universal analytics tracking, it's very similar in terms of you can provide event information, uh, but there's a bit more that you can do as well. So instead of user IDs, we can also include a, a client ID. So that's useful, again, for um, tracking people across devices or platforms or, um, or even sessions, which can be useful. Um, and this basically means that um, any, anything that um, has a web connection can potentially be sending data into Google Analytics. So anything from smart TV apps to your library kiosk systems, so, you know, someone's checking a book back in, if you've got a snippet of code in, in your kiosk uh, um, interface, then it could be sending something into Google Analytics. Your um, EPOS, again, could be sending uh, purchases made um, in physically uh, into your Google Ana Analytics e-commerce tracking. Uh, and you know, other uh, back-end applications, so uh, any piece of software that can hit an, an internet, uh, a HTTP URL can potentially be sending data uh, into to Google Analytics. Um, so let's look at some examples of what that means in reality. So no tracking, no problem. So um, I've talked a couple of examples there where traditional Google Analytics tracking on a, on a web page, but what about for uh, services or systems where they're, they're not yours, so you can't uh, include a web tracking piece of code onto, your, onto that site? Well, here's uh, uh, an experiment I ran where um, basically I've got a um, piece of script running in the blue box. And that script talks to the VLE via an API. So it's, it's saying, you know, uh, in this particular case, it was looking for discussion board information. So the script goes to the discussion board and it pulls back various things like, you know, who's posted, how many words did they post, what was that post and reply to. The script can process that, strips out the, any identity if we need to, but also perhaps including a user ID for us to look at later, and then pushes those counts into Google Analytics. And so we've got a web view of uh, a discussion board. Um, so that obviously relies on your VLE having some sort of API that a script can um, query and get data back, but you know, it opens up so, to so many other opportunities. There's a couple of interesting things with this example just to highlight. So um, this script, um, I'd, I'd written in app script, which you've never heard of, uh, which, so it ran every 15 minutes. So that obviously potentially means that your Google Analytics data is going to be like every 15 minute batch. Um, and you perhaps want it down to the second about when, when did that person post. And, um, oh, in fact, so before I go any further, this kind of, uh, 
So uh, well, let's see. I'll step back a bit. So we've got a user ID in here. We've got uh, the number of replies that that user put onto the thread. We've got a word count. Uh, and um, just as another very quick metric, uh, I just counted the number of question marks uh, in the data. Um, and this, this was done, even though the script was running every 15 minutes, with the measurement protocol, we can actually include uh, a queue time. So this allows us to run a script um, every 15 minutes. And if we've got timestamp data uh, from the API, we can actually inc include that. So we can make that a latent hit. So if someone posted something 14 minutes ago, we can say this hit was 14 minutes ago. Uh, Google say there's a, a four hour window that you can go back and reliably put data into the uh, Google Analytics uh, and see it in, in the, the web dashboard and the API. Um, but the, the maximum queue time length can be a lot longer than that. So it doesn't have to be real time anymore. You can be running stuff in batches. So if you've got a device that isn't always on the internet, uh, when it is on, comes back online, it could be pushing data into Google Analytics. Other thing that you can do with the measurement protocol is send things in batches. Um, so uh, instead of individually hitting 20 times with uh, event information, um, you can do that in one batch. So it just saves uh, a bit on processing. Um, it's something useful to be aware of. So some examples of other examples of how you might uh, use the measurement protocol. Um, within the traditional uh, Google Analytics, there was, there was always the option to, to send exceptions into Google Analytics data, which was useful to track errors on your, your web systems. We can do something similar with, um, with the measurement protocol. So here's a quick video. Um, so what this is showing is um, on the, the left-hand side, we've got uh, um, uh, a macro running in Excel, which is going to pull some data um, or, or process some data from Excel and push it to uh, uh, an online database. So uh, I think it was a MongoDB database. But what, what this snippet of code is doing is it's also pinging the Google Analytics API um, through the measurement protocol with those hits. So um, it's you know, sending its activity into two places at the same time. So in real time, you can, you can see what's going on. You might wonder, um, what's the point of, of doing that? Um, so if I just jump to the next slide. So the, the way this example was used was actually to see which versions of libraries people were using. Um, so uh, as, as um, this product evolved, they you know, obviously up versioned and they wanted, because uh, the code was being run offline in, well, not offline, from the desktop in Excel, he wanted to see how many of his uh, users were upgrading their software. Uh, and the big dip in October was when a, a particular um, database was taken offline, so it no longer worked, so people had to uh, upgrade to keep on using that particular functionality. And uh, we can do uh, the analytics of things, so uh, extending internet of things. This is an example from Nico Michelli of um, taking uh, a Raspberry Pi and connecting it to a motion sensor. So all he's, he's done is written a script in Raspberry Pi that takes the motion sensor data and then ping the, the measurement protocol. Um, so you can use, you know, it's, it's not just motion sensors, you can use any array of sensors um, and you can be pushing data into to Google Analytics. With uh, his particular example, he was looking at um, uh, his sleeping pattern. So he was sending, <laughs> he also set this up above his, he, he, he just became a father recently, and he set it up above his, um, his baby's crib as well. Um, so he was sending his baby's movement into Google Analytics, which, I don't know, it just sounds wrong to me, but Easter room. He also set this up at an event at the drinks bar 
<laughs> so he could see uh, people were talking whilst the drinks bar was open so they could see which which talkers got the least interest by the most number of people that went to the drinks bar um, and we could do other things so um, I could you know I said um, show of hands um, something I was hoping to show you today but didn't quite finish the development was uh, using Raspberry Pi with a, a, a camera and there's a, an open CV library which basically is able to process images so it, it would be able if I tweaked it enough to detect perhaps um, you putting your hands up and we could push that data into Google Analytics or if estates are wanting to do for example uh, a survey of you know uh, stairwell use over the course of the day again you could be using Google Analytics for this pushing motion data into uh, the, uh, to their database and then using the web view to um, see and um, importantly there are other Google APIs out there just if you're thinking about doing even more with Google Analytics so there are AP APIs around administering accounts so instead of having to go into the web interface and start uh, applying uh, view permissions to, to different people um, if you've got a spreadsheet or a database elsewhere you could write a script that automatically does this so you know you might want to provide access to your analytics data for a short window instead of going in and manually adding and removing people you could have a script that does this for you and I mentioned before the, the reporting as well um, so it's not just the, the, the web view that you get um, which does give you things like export of data into C CSV but you could be using the API to pull that data back out of interest uh, how many are using uh, Google Analytics reporting not from the web interface but custom white tops so a couple of people so you'll be familiar with this concept um, a couple of things to note this has been made even easier recently within Google Sheets um, Google Analytics have created a, an add-on where you can query the data into Google Sheets which makes it easy to uh, if you don't want to give view permissions to your analytics account you could set up the add-on to pull back certain data and then share a sheet with someone um, and this can be set up to schedule so it can refresh the data so if you want to give a, a weekly report or a monthly report uh, the, the add-on will let you do that it needs a bit of poking around in terms of setting up and working out which metrics and dimensions that you need in your reports but once you've done it uh, it makes it a lot easier and this was a a project that I actually developed for IWMW14 I think it was um, looking at this was pre add-on of um, creating a script that could just dump data files uh, into Google Drive or uh, email them to people or um, uh, you know just uh, add them to Google Drive um, this is kind of superseded by uh, what Google have done with um, the super proxy which is their version of this that runs on uh, the Google Cloud Platform and just in terms of the future uh, Google Data Studio and anyone heard of Data Studio a couple of people so this is in closed beta right now so uh, it, annoyingly it's only available to users in the US but this is uh, a tool that I think Google have developed more out of the reaction to the wider marketplace with um, products like Tableau where it is a lot easier to create uh, custom views on data. Uh, data Studio is similar to Tableau and drag and drop information into a page um, and it looks nicer so you can share it with your, your VP without wincing at your, your poor graphs. Um, so it hooks into the Google Analytics API, it also hooks into other data sources so you can get data in from Google Sheets as well and I think there are going to be other data sources that you can use so perhaps something to watch for the future so um, that was kind of a, a whistle stop tour around what is possible nowadays with the, the Google Analytics uh, and Google Analytics APIs hopefully it's inspired you to go off uh, if, not, if nothing else experiment a little uh, uh, and have a bit of fun um, uh, um, but do, know, do, do not do any evil because that would be bad 
Um, so, you know, essentially, um, hopefully, you've got a new uh, perspective on Google Analytics. It's, it's something that we can uh, uh, rethink how we use it within our organizations and um, uh, rethink what we are actually asking of the data, uh, and which obviously uh, makes us rethink what data we're collecting as well. And uh, I'll leave it there.